tight phases should be done. It's always uh, a lot of a uh, lot of possibilities. It's like a game. Yes, it's like a game. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to find your way and then try to do it as systematic as possible. So it took me about two years, or in between. I didn't continue to work on it. And every now and then I started to work. But you see here sometimes there are diagonals in it. But it, it, it just... Yes, I think I'm on one hand a, a typical typographer because I always work with type. And uh, the graphic design is a very wide field. And I, I only take a small part of this, uh, and especially uh, design where, where typography plays a more important role than images. But sometimes it's a combination. Yes. Uh, on the other hand, I also do a lot of exhibitions, yes. so three-dimensional work. And that, uh, uh, for me, is very the tension between the two sides, the, the two-dimensional thing and the three-dimensional thing, that uh, that's what I like, to, to work from one in the other field. Uh, and that, um, in both sides, it influenced myself. For instance, I think that in general, I am much more influenced by architecture than by graphic design in my work. Um, I have a tendency to work quite uh, constructive. I am always constructing type. I'm always working on grids and, and uh, uh, like you see the poster at the moment that's there on the wall, it is, it is, everything is construction, uh, on a, a, a fairly logical base of construction. What I did, for instance, was trying to see the work of the artist that was in the period of the Van Abbe Museum. I looked at the work of the artist and I got a certain impression, and this impression I tried to translate typographically in the words of the, for instance, Léger. The, it's, it's hanging upstairs, the poster of Léger. Uh, it was a period when Léger made these uh, uh, paintings with very heavy black lines around the images. And that influenced me to create the word Léger with very black heavy lines. But in my way, I did it so, it's a mixture of the influence of Léger in my work. But it's always a construction. And so I was always interested in constructing type on a logical way. And then in 19, I think it was 1965, when I was on a um, large um, print exhibition in Germany, a print and paper exhibition, one of these large ones. And I went there with my father, who was a graphic uh, artist, uh, not a graphic artist, he was a, a block maker and uh, from the technical side. And w I went with him to these exhibitions. And, and in 65, I went this one. And then I saw the first machine for digitizing typography, the, the first generation. It was a quite rough machine. Uh, the, 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 uh, not that many pixels yet. And, and, and then I saw that they, they produced a Garamond in that period uh, for the public. And I think it looked ugly. It, 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 has a, it, it had the flavor of Garamond, that it, well, it was not the, the beautiful Garamond as we know. And um, then I thought, well, then I enlarged this six-point Garamond by a magnifier glass, and I saw what happened in this digitizing. And I thought that the round shapes were always affected, because for six-point you had a certain array of types and for the 8-point or 10-point or 24-point, it was always a different outline. And that influences the idea of the type, what you see. Your, your eye is very sharp in that respect. And um, then I said, maybe we should think it the other way around and create a typeface that is suitable for that machine. Yes, and it was because we will surely go another 30 years with that machine yeah. before they invent something else. So let's think another direction and uh, well half of the people who heard about my idea said well it's crazy you you shouldn't follow the machine the machine should follow us i think well okay but you it will take another 20 years 30 years before the machine can follow us let's try and then i made a typeface with only straight lines that was 67 yes. and then i i called it the new alphabet and you said also at this period you make a lecture as the icp Design tips for the computer age. Yes. That was the beginning of this. That was approach. it. That was it. Yes. I said it should be for the the computer age started. Yes. You you only read articles about computers. It was IBM, yes. and I IBM was my client. Yes. I worked for IBM. Yes. 
So I was happy that I always knew about the new developments. It was large machines and, and I used pictures of such machines in the booklet I produced in that period on the new alphabet. And um, so I, I was very interested in these modern technical developments. Even, even in the same years, the, 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 the people flew to the moon. That's why I used a photograph of that. Uh, I, I, it was all influenced my work. And then, so I designed my first specific typeface as a whole typeface, a compute alphabet. Uh, I decided to make an alphabet that is as wide as height, is in a square, so that it's not only in line lining, but also and from top to bottom it's lining, to make a very quiet impression. And a colleague of mine who worked with me in my office, Gerard Unger, who became a famous type designer afterwards, he was the first to react and said, well, thinking along your line, you also can make readable type. <laughs> so he proposed a typeface, sketches of it, and produced also a booklet as, as a, as a follow-up of my booklet. And that was the beginning. He developed as a type designer, and he became even a type designer for the company who produced these machines, Hell from, Digi from, from Kiel. And then, um, in, as a result of this typeface, I got a commission from Olivetti in Italy to do a typeface for an electric typeface, typewriter. And also Müller Brockman had a question from them to do also in the same time. So we both made, we both made an alphabet. For uh, it is, it is. Uh, you can be, you can see it in in a, in a book on in, in, of the development of Olivetti. It's it's introduced in, included in that book, the both alphabets. And then when the alphabet, all the proofs were ready, and it was within the limitation of that electric typewriter that are only four widths, and very much limitations. That was for the daisy wheel typewriter, and IBM had the ball, yeah. and they had the daisy wheel, the daisy wheel right. and. Uh, when I finished this and the proofs were ready, they decided not to produce the typewriter anymore because the electronic typewriters came and they had much more possibility. So I got my typeface back and I used it two years later for a, for a post stamp. I used the word for Netherlands and the, and the numerals. And, um, but still I only designed one grade of type, the whole alphabet. And then uh, I forgot, and um, then at the end of the 90s, 97, the, uh, 97 it must be about 97, yeah. the foundry asked me, couldn't we produce your original typeface, the new alphabet, digitally so that more people can use it? Because I found out in that time that a lot of English pop magazines used the typeface, but they always redraw it and sometimes very badly, and sometimes more readable. You, they, they, they try to make it readable. But suddenly it, they, it appeared in, in pop magazines like Reagan and blah, 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 and these magazines. And I was highly interested to, to see what happened in that music scene. And that's why the foundry came to me and said, let's digitize it so they can use the proper alphabet. <laughs> and then they asked me after that to... Uh, to look into my other alphabets, and the first was the Gritnik, yeah. and they called it the Gritnik in that time because my colleagues called me Gritnik oh, in the okay. 70s okay. because of my, my work for the museum. They said, you are a Gritnik. And uh, so when we had to decide on the name, we said, well, why not call it Gritnik? And then uh, the alphabet of, of uh, Klaus Oldenburg, they digitized. And they digitized some typefaces from that they only made one word for, for a poster. And we developed with them the whole alphabet. And, they, and, and for the Gritnik, they did, made the, the, line, the light version and the normal version and the bold version. And they have now a stencil version and the, the fabric. And so it developed. And I think we have now about five typefaces. Mm -hmm.